once more we illustrate the creation of free by diagrams in a system that is a little bit more complex than your typical um, just simple variety one and what we've got here is a compre air conditioning compressor that is uh, supported by a beam system and that beam is then supported by suspension hangers up to the sloped roof. We've got pin connections everywhere and that does mean that this thing could actually rock back and forth. Uh, sometimes in our statics examples we have to ignore slightly some of the reality that might be there. Um, and that's true in this case, that static equilibrium is only true for a special condition of, of applied forces. Our goal here is to help to illustrate some of what I was just talking about, but particularly to see how all the free by diagrams of the different components actually fit and work together and how it is that um, in this structure that's supporting the machine how it is that we can actually reasonably do some analysis even though theoretically this thing could actually sway back and forth like a swing. Right? So let's think a little bit about what free by diagrams are. That is when they're freeing bodies apart so that you end up with each part being freed from all constraints. Right Now here's the thing. A free by diagram could be anything and, and so you got, well, wait a minute, how do I know what to do? Well, the natural thing to do for you at this stage is to pull pins that do literally um, pull things apart as opposed to cutting them in the middle of members. We can do that too, and we will very often in our study of statics. But let's, let's take a picture of this as though it were an exploded diagram, what some people would call an assembly diagram, the... Um, traditional joke is that at the Christian holiday of Christmas that the parents are always having to put the toys together for their children and they can't figure out these assembly drawings and they always have leftover pieces in the morning that they hide from their child hoping that the child will break the thing before you end up um, finding out where that piece was really supposed to go. Right? Okay, so let's see how that, that, that was all a story to get you to see, hey, we're going to pull all the natural pins out of this system, leaving us with three physical pieces that, that actually correspond to the real system. Don't have to do that, but we will here. Right? Now, the applied load is this 2,000 pounds, or two kips, off-center of the length of the beam. And so, hmm, that's at a three foot and two foot point, not perfectly to scale shown, but enough offset so that we don't think it's been symmetrically placed. Now, you've been told that every time you pull a pin, hey, you know, friction-free pins have no restraint to rotation, but they do offer restraint as a pin in two directions. They rep represent something that would be able to prevent, in this case, a vertical mo motion and a horizontal motion. Right? And that means there has to be a force to do that. We call that dy and dx. Likewise, down at the other end, then we'll have some sort of then system that prevents then likewise. Now, note, there's no other applied forces on the system. We're ignoring the self-weight of the rod, so we can anticipate that whatever the x value is at this pin at the top has got to be equal and opposite to the cx value down at the bottom, likewise for the vertical. That's by equilibrium of the whole rod. Now, by one of Newton's laws, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction at that exact point, then that's why we can flip cy around immediately like so, and we do the same thing with cx. I'm not going to worry about what any of these values are right now. I'm just going to get them all in there. right? This is what we would do for pins. Same kind of thing would happen over here at point A where we had a pin. There's your AY. And then we get um, that turned around here. And I'm just going to complete all the vertical pieces so I can get all those done. And there's your BY. Now, gee, what, what direction would you like uh, x to go? Well, 
And I'm going to come back down here. If CX is not 0, then it's going to the right. And to put this into equilibrium, I'd have to have AX at this end going the opposite direction. And then i got to reflect that over onto this piece. And then likewise, then I can figure out that BX would look like it's going to the left in order for that all to work out. That's the assemb the uh, free by diagram of each major component of the system. Right? We're not going to worry about this typical bracket and the double shear that's actually here in the study of the pin. You do that in the mechanics of materials course. We're not going to do that uh, right now. All right. So that would be an appropriate set of free by diagrams. Now, we actually know a lot more here about this. For instance, take a look at what's going on in one of these rods. There's no re restraint from rotation, so there is no moment to be put there and no moment down here. There's no applied force on this thing. And that means that if we were to some moments about point D, let's take clockwise as positive. Well, dy and dx go through the point, so they got no effect. cy goes through that point. It has no effect. And cx, then, is our only one that's left over. We'll have cx, and then times, in this case, 3 feet. And since we're in static equilibrium, we'll set that equal to 0. And that tells us that, hey, therefore, cx must be 0. Huh. Well, if CX is 0, then sum of forces in the X means DX has to be 0. And, or I could sum moments about point C and independently arrive at the same conclusion. Now come over to here. Well, axial equilibrium in the beam means that, well, AX then has to be 0 because CX was 0. And, oh, well, that's 0. Bam! All of those X components have to be absolutely zero. Otherwise, these bars are spinning like crazy. And down here, this thing would be taken off somehow. Whoa, wait a minute. That, you know, all because I just put a compressor on and this whole thing started spinning? No, we can't do that. Right? Not in this system. These are, these rods are in pure elongation only. Kind of like a cable. Right? And so we could have simplified this model down, recognizing that we end up with a two-force member for rod CD and also a two-force member for rod BC, uh, AB. Why do I call them two-force members? Well, count them up. Because these two, the X components, the ones that are not along the longitudinal axis. It has nothing to do with the X direction. It's about the longitudinal direction and transverse. The transverse values, you'll learn to call these shear eventually, must be, in this case, zero. All you get is an axial force. Force is directed along the longitudinal axis. Fancy way of saying the long axis of the member. And so those are the only ones that can... Uh, not be zero here. And I've got one, two. Yeah, they're equal and opposite. So either this member is in tension or it's in compression. It's the only choice, the only thing happening in this two force member. And it means that I could simplify the free by diagram here of this system down to a really nice little elegant one. There's AC. And I end up with then a hanger force at A. A hanger force at C, and the applied load here at that three foot, two foot level of the 2,000 pounds or two keps. That would be the nice simplified one um, that works just fine. That that makes all of this clutter unnecessary that we see down here. If you recognize two force members, it sure makes your life a lot easier, right? If you don't recognize that, you're stuck with this. As exploded free body diagram. You're stuck with all kinds of things, including the global free body diagram that would initially look like following. I pulled those pin supports at B and at D. I've got four unknowns. I've got three equations of equilibrium. Uh-oh, Houston, we got a problem. In reality, those pins tell me something special. These internal pins at A and C, two additional pieces of information that cause these to be zero. This also helps to illustrate why, if you were to push on the side, this thing would rock back and forth freely, right? which is not such a good thing 
usually. So in real life, we would need to do something here to prevent this from uh, rocking back and forth. Maybe we don't use a pin connection at A or at C. Maybe we put cross braces in that prevent that racking back and forth. There's a lot of ways we could uh, change that in the big picture of, of how this would really work in practice.